What do you say about a caller to Islam who gives himself the title Da'wa Man? Who with his companions started a club called the Badr Club, where they accept only 313 people. The amount of people who died at the Battle of Badr. And the time spent in it is 313 hours and the price is 313 pounds for participants. And those who get in, seven lectures each is called, for every seven lectures it is called a military operation or expedition. All this is supposedly to lead Muslims to be of high value, or to be a high value man. You really want me to answer this in like one? I mean, you don't know. This is nothing but bid'ah, foolishness, ignorance, using the religion to gain the dunya, to, to increase themselves in the possessions of the dunya, using sloganism and events of, of a serious nature, where The amount of people who died at Badr was not 313, by the way. But anyway, that's what it says. I only read the question as it was. Nevertheless, the point here being that all of this is misguidance and it is, it is used as a tool, as a branding tool or a marketing tool to convince the Muslims to give them money and to follow their sect and to follow their groups and to follow their parties. These people are ignoramuses who are young, they use the strength of social media to misguide the people. But as I said, when I was speaking about gaming, the real foolish ones are the ones who are giving them money. Because in days gone by, the people of misguidance used to work hard to misguide the people. And it used to be free. Nowadays, they're misguiding you and you're paying for the privilege of being misguided. So you're paying for it as well. You know, it's like you're paying for your own destruction. You're paying for a path that leads to hellfire. Just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, هَذِهِ سُبُلٌ مُتَفَرِّقَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ سَبِيلٍ شَيْطَانٍ يَدْرُوا إِلَيْهِ Next to the straight path, هَذَا سَبِيلُ اللَّهِ When you do that path, you do the other paths. And he said, these are divergent paths. At the head of each one, each of them is a devil calling to it. So these are devils that are calling to their parts of misguidance. These are callers to misguidance and callers to the dunya. Callers who are calling you to let go of your money, to release your funds so they can misguide you. So you feel satisfied that you spent good money to be misguided. And these are just slogans. How dare they? use a tremendous event of the Badr, of the Battle of Badr in the time of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which was the first of the major campaigns of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the majority of those who participated were the Muhajirun those who were exiled and those who migrated to Medina and they fought in that battle and some of them were martyred how dare they use those figures and those numbers as a marketing tool to fill their bank accounts. Avoid these types of people and anyone similar to them. These people are his beyond Ahlul Bid'ah, misguided, calling others to misguidance. Dua ala abwabi jahannam as the Prophet sallallahu said. Call us upon the gates of the hellfire. Sit hum lana ya Rasulullah. Describe them to us, O Messenger of Allah. Um min jildatina. They are from us, meaning from the Muslims. From our skin, meaning from our people. Wa yatakallamuna bi alsinatina. And they speak with our tongue. So they speak with the language of Islam. And they are from the ranks of the Muslims. 
but they are dua to stand at the gates of Jahannam. And there are many of them. And the majority of the callers are from this synth, are from this group, or from these types of groups. The people who are upon the straight path, then they are few in every generation. Yes, they are now, alhamdulillah, after the grace and the mercy of Allah upon us and His bounty, after 30 years of da'wah, and they are many thousands of Salafis in the UK who are staunchly upon Salafiyya and Sunnah. I can't put a figure on it. But if you count the various Eids that take place, because you can't be in two Eids at the same time, right? Regardless of what these cyber fanatics think, right? So sometimes what we do is that just to get an idea of the amount of people that are attracted towards the da'wah, that we do a count. So when Marcus Sunnah here in Alpatan does his Eid khutbah, or the Eid prayer, we find out generally how many people attend. Dar Sunnah, how many people attend? Masjid bin Baz, how many people attend? Marcus Mu'ad, how many people attend? Marcus Masjid Sunnah in Cranford, how many people attend? Likewise in Slough, in Cardiff, in Bristol, in Birmingham, in Stoke, in Manchester, in Bradford, in Middlesbrough. In all of these places where the Salafis have centers of learning, that how many gather for Eid? And when you add the figures together, it is somewhere in the region of 20,000 in total. And maybe there's more than that, that they end up at the local mission with their parents and so on. But it gives you a ballpark. We can't be exact, but it gives you a ballpark. Salafia is growing, but it is still a minority. As a, as a, you know, as a jama'ah, then it is a minority of the Muslims as a whole because there are over 1.5 million Muslims in the UK. So even if it was 20 or 30 thousand Salafis, it's a small minority. But amongst the practicing Muslims, those who consider themselves to be practiced, if it's practicing, then it's a sizable number. If you consider that the Salafis have been giving da'wah actively, really for only for the last 25 years, let's say. Whereas some of these other jama'at have been here since the 60s. You know, they've been here for 30 years before the Salafis really became active. Not that Salafis weren't here before, because they were. But they were in small pockets and they were, you know, not very active. So our da'wah is growing. So we are not in need. We have those everywhere. Why do you need to be one of 313? and pay 313 and then regret paying 313 when you can come to Marqaz al-Sunnah and get it free and get it authentic go to Salah Marqaz Mu'ad and get it free and get it authentic go to Marqaz al-Salafi in Manchester and get it free and in Liverpool with those brothers at Marqaz al-Bukhari get it free and authentic and elsewhere around the country Salafis have centers of learning all around the country, students of knowledge who teach. Oxford, alhamdulillah, Salafis in Oxford, Salafis in Reading, Marcus a Salafi in Reading, Milton Keynes. I don't want someone saying afterwards, oh, you didn't mention us. I'm trying to just get everything in. All of these centers of learning and study and marakis up and down the country, move to one of them. You shouldn't be just, you know, living isolated, you know, in Portsmouth or in Cornwall somewhere. You know, go to where the Salafis are. Choose where you want, and then plan towards it. And then the next stage is to go to a Muslim country. Heritage country is ideal for you, because in a heritage country of yours, you can live freely. Without an iqama that is renewed every year, you can live freely, openly, own property, build houses, and it is yours generationally. Generation after generation, it is yours. We've just come back from Pakistan, myself, Abu Iyad, Abu Hakim, after a few weeks of da'wah. And we see that the da'wah in those countries in Pakistan is growing. As it is, I spoke to a brother yesterday who just came back from Somalia three days ago. He said it's, it's amazing in Haragesa. Amazing. The aman, the peace. He said, yes, it is developing. You know, it's not that it is wealthy and rich, but it is rich in terms of heritage. 
and the fact that everywhere around you are Muslims. And likewise in other countries such as Morocco with our brother Abdul Hilal Ahmami. In these places you find that now Marakis are being built. Like in Islamabad, Marakis al Darimi and Masjid al Darimi publications. I think they've just published about 12, 13 books in Urdu of high quality that I've never seen in the Urdu language before. In that quality and in that subject matter. Conference that we organized in Islamabad, I think about two weeks ago with our brother Abu Hakim and others. And there are students of knowledge there. Abu Arwa Ali Mir, who moved from the UK to Pakistan. And likewise, Zubair Abbasi and Tariq Ali Brohi. In one place, three students of knowledge teaching Arabic and teaching Quran. And there's a sister there that teaches Quran three times a week at their markets. And then they're building a masjid, a sizable masjid. This can actually replicate itself in other countries, but we have to be there. You can't do it remotely. You can't sit here and expect four walls to put themselves up, you know, in uh, Somalia or Morocco or elsewhere. So let's do what we can do. Optimistic, zeal. You yourselves may not be individually capable because you may not have the means or the know-how, but there will be others who are already working. So you aid them, you support them. You visit with them, or you go to the place that they visited and you see, okay, I'm from Pakistan. A person may say, I'm from Pakistan, I've never seen Pakistan. Well, Abu Hakim has already been and gone. <laughs> no, no, that is a bit ajeeb. A man from Jamaican heritage travels all the way to Pakistan, lands in Lahore, travels to Talagang in Punjab. Then he moves further north towards Islamabad and, and stays in Rawalpindi. And you say to yourself, I've never even heard of these names and, I'm, and my mom and dad are from Pakistan. Why does he do that, Ya Ikhwan? Because of his love. Because of his love for Sunnah and the Salaf. So where are you with that? Ask yourselves the question, my brothers and sisters, about the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to that which is best and protect us from all that which is evil, and guide us to the straight path and enter us united in our fadals and a'la. Wa jazakum Allah khair. Wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Wa shahadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa